Dating in Singapore is so difficult nowadays that women have turned to secret Facebook groups to trade information on the men they meet on dating apps. Now of course, this has sparked a lot of debate about whether this is appropriate or even legal in the first place, and we're going to dive into all of that today. But before that, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be a lot cooler if you did. So recently it was reported that there's been a private Facebook group going around called SG Women Ask. And the women in this group have been sharing everything from their dating experiences to even photos of the men they've dated. So here's a quick look at what the page is all about. This group is a safe place for women to protect, uplift and empower each other while spilling the tea on dating in SG. The main users of this group inquire about people you've met, matched, seeing to find out if anyone has any experiences to share about this person. Any tea? or matchmaking great people, post information of personal interactions, a safe space for relationship support and advice in general. Let's keep things positive. But keeping things positive only lasted for so long because it was later reported that men who found out about this group thought that the whole concept was nothing but cruel. So I thought it was really interesting when I first came across this article because it goes into a lot of detail about how this group is run and what goes down inside of it. So let's take a look. So it works like this. A woman posts a screenshot of a man's dating profile with his name and asks along the lines of any T and members will then respond with what they know about the guy. These include first-hand accounts and screenshots of past interactions. Some of the comments make for grim reading, detailing incidents of sexual assault, gaslighting, harassment, and abuse. Now, of course, this brings to mind a very similar example of a dating guide Excel sheet that went around back in 2021, and I see a lot of similarities to what these groups were trying to do. The article then goes on to share anecdotes from one of the members in this group. It's like how men have semi-boy and hardware zone forums, says Christine. SG Women Ask is an open forum for women to call out douchebags. Now you see, it sounds like a pretty noble cause coming from Christine over here, but if we compare to how things played out with the Dating Guide XL sheet, it's very clear to see that when there's a large group of people involved, it's pretty difficult to manage and things can get out of control really quick. But for Christine, it has been an eye-opener for her while scrolling through posts after posts, Christine uncovered stories of women who have been allegedly sexually harassed, gaslighted or scammed by men they met from dating apps. One of them even found out from other members in SG Women Ask that a guy she matched on Tinder is already married with children. The audacity of that guy. Well, I guess it's true that there are definitely some men out there who are acting pretty sus on these dating apps or committing some inappropriate acts like this. And so when these women get to trade information on the Facebook group, they're definitely able to protect themselves for their safety. SG Women Ask, previously named Are We Dating The Same Guy, is more than just a review platform for women. It serves as a space for relationship support and advice, as stated by the administrator of the 2,700 member group in the group's description. Numerous members provided guidance on egg freezing, while anonymous users sought tips on having affairs with married men and being a sugar baby. Now wait a minute, so this community is also encouraging people to have affairs? while calling out guys who might be having affairs. The math ain't mathing. There were also instances of women offering to help save each other if their dates go bad. Now you see, the fact that women have to resort to doing this in order to look out for each other is honestly pretty sad, and the fact that this is the state of affairs right now is definitely not the vibe. But I'm sure you're starting to see how there might be certain discrepancies with how this group is being run, because if people are now getting tips on how to have affairs, how does this make it any different from any other gossip platform? Now, one thing that I did find interesting was the original name of this Facebook group, Are We Dating The Same Guy? Because I looked it up and it turns out that back in 2022, this name belonged to a Facebook group that was started in New York City. And I guess that was the starting point for all of these Facebook groups to pop up all over the world, including Singapore. And even back then when many of these Facebook groups were starting to pop up all over the US, there was already a lot of divided opinion on the existence of these groups in the first place. So I do find it interesting that the people who created the Singapore version of this Facebook group didn't seem to have considered all of the backlash that came up from the US. But going back to the original article, here's a look at how things are run inside the Singapore Facebook group. First names are allowed, but surnames are not. Details about the men's jobs, home addresses, and contact information are also prohibited. The group moderators encourage kind and uplifting words, strictly forbidding hate speech or bullying. Well, the fact that they are moderators who are enforcing certain rules already puts this miles ahead of their dating guide Excel sheet which failed to take off eventually. But what I'm curious to know is whether the rules are enforced equally among all of its members because I don't know if these moderators can manage such a big group of people in that group alone. When a member asked if a guy named Tim from Coffee Meets Big O has any red flags, Another member commented that he is on steroids based off a topless photo of him. Okay, so I guess this would make sense if you want to date someone who is not on steroids. Is that really a criteria out there? I'm not sure. Also, I'm really curious to know why this particular member has such unique expertise in being able to tell whether people in their photos are on steroids or not. 
but sure, why not? In another post, a different member wrote my honest and humble opinion. I see pictures of guys here. Most of them seem mediocre, with a hairline receding like they urgently need hair restoration in Turkey. Ladies, it's time to sayonara and keep on fishing. So, where was the part about keeping things positive? I also love how this is under the guise of giving an honest and humble opinion, like this somehow gives you leeway to just take the piss on strangers online. The article then gives a number of actual examples of these posts and how people comment on them. Any T, anyone dating him nowadays, and it's a guy with a blue long sleeve shirt that's rolled up, and interestingly, he's standing next to a sign that says, so you've been naughty or good all year. Nah, biggest red flag and honestly, he was slide in my DMs and asked me out, then flaked. No, biggest red flag ever. Just no, don't wish to share my trauma but without even asking this group, everyone already knows this walking red flag. It's almost like they warn you about him at immigration. He is gross and manipulative. He's been at this from before I even went to uni. It's been like 7 years now and he's still at it. Just block and don't even bother talking to him. If you need more info on my experience, you can PM. Now after looking at this, there are definitely a number of questions that come to mind, like how are these comments verified or are they credible at all in the first place? I think like the article mentioned, there are moderators in place, so maybe they're doing the hard work of verifying all of this information here. But again, how is that going to be balanced out against all of the many posts that are probably on this page? Another post over here with the caption, Any tea on this guy? Chatted with him on a dating app. Claims he is blank. This guy has commitment issues and likes to love bomb girls. Okay, not a good start. Went out with him for a period of time and found out that he cheated on me with multiple girls on the dating app and was having s*** with them. Ooh, the tea is piping hot. He will also make you pay for dates by gaslighting you and want to be physically intimate with you very quickly after a few dates. He also told me about his crazy exes and all their mental issues. But seems to me that he's the one who is either driving them mental with his inability to commit to a monogamous relationship or that he's the mental one. I mean, if what this reviewer is saying is true, then this guy... Yeah. Thumbs down. Angry Mickey Mouse face. But also, I just find it so strange that people are leaving lengthy reviews like that on a person, like how you would for a restaurant. It's just so disconcerting. But wait, there's another comment under this same post that says, Matched him years back. Pleasant and friendly guy. Wait a minute. So I don't know what to believe now because was he really a cheater who manipulates and gaslights or is he a pleasant and friendly guy? I guess it's now very clear in this example that the information being shared might not always be 100% verifiable or credible. But one thing's for sure, this guy definitely knows how to half a water bottle drink up with his arm raised at 90 degrees like that. Now in this article about the Singapore Facebook group was shared around, there were plenty of people online with very strong opinions about this, particularly from men. I know some women who have used these sorts of Facebook groups before and they usually say that they do it for their own safety, to prevent accidentally dating a psycho. But the truth is that these groups are a terrible invasion of people's privacies. When I asked the women who use these groups if they would be comfortable with their date using a similar group to scout them beforehand, none of them were able to give a straight answer, usually replying with something like, oh that's different, men don't have to worry about r well, I don't know about that. Now, that's a topic for a whole other video, but I'm sure you're starting to see that there are definitely certain double standards at play over here. I think a huge problem is false info and poison pen info. Yeah, it just makes you think about how people could easily gang up on a person they dislike and perhaps even destroy their reputation overnight just by seeding information that isn't completely true. When girls do it, it's fine, but if guys do it, then all hell breaks loose. Now that's definitely interesting to note because when men in New York City found out about the Are We Dating The Same Guy Facebook group, they then decided to create their own version that gave their reviews of dating experiences with women. And of course, people were up in arms about it. Now then we get into the legal side of things and whether or not Facebook groups like this are even allowed in the first place. Now, a criminal lawyer mentioned that participants in this group may be liable for criminal prosecution under the Protection from Harassment Act. Actions like sharing personal stories about others on a public platform, especially if it causes distress, can be considered harassment. And the other thing to note is that even though it's a private Facebook group, anyone in there can easily screenshot stuff and then disseminate them to make it public. Now, to give you a better understanding of how Facebook groups like this might run into issues with the law, we can look no further than an ongoing defamation case in London. Now, a lawsuit was filed by a 41-year-old man alleging he was defamed by the London group after he says he was called names, accused of sending lewd photos and of being a bad parent after his likeness was uploaded to the group. Now, there's definitely a number of troubling issues over here, but I guess it just goes to show you that moderation and enforcement of rules can only go so far in these private Facebook groups. And then there was also this article that shared the men's point of view about how they felt after being featured in these groups. Men who have been posted on the groups have felt violated. 
Even if you've been given positive reviews by the groups, it cannot feel great to know you've been discussed by potentially thousands of strangers, tarred slightly even by the association. Honestly, I'm not sure how any of these Facebook groups can be sustained as a tool for good in the long term, especially considering how the SG Women Ask Facebook group has already been removed or taken down permanently. But going back to the article, Christine, who has been in the group for the past three months, expressed her discomfort when other members were randomly commenting about men that they have not met yet. But women there mostly comment about the men based on real experiences and evidence, she said. Don't be a d if you don't want to have d comments. Yeah, Christine, I'm not sure if that's the real takeaway over here. While I'm definitely all for being kind and extending that to sharing one's dating experiences, maybe we don't have to do all of this online and instead just go outside and touch grass. YOLO Say no no YOLO YOLO You only live once